starting I'm starting the recording right now we're recording this is our lecture for design 350 as I was saying in our ultimate class of the penultimate week for those that want to be really confused I just posted the um, sorry about that I don't know how I forgot but I just posted the um, the recording for um, for last week so and this is all messed up here don't worry about all this we're going to go over the mail merge and then I'm gonna ask any of you to um, show what you've been doing and then again talk about our final portfolio and how you might want to put it together if anybody's done any of that yet so um, let me go over the mail merge I've got a video here for you uh, but I'm not going to play it because it's, it's you know, I can just do it for you and take your questions and it'll be a little bit easier. But here is a, about a seven-minute video about mail merge. And we talked about this in class at the end of class on Tuesday. And I really think it's a, a tool that will be good for you to know how to use. And whether you use this program called Document Studio or ultimate mail merge or if you just use Microsoft Microsoft invented mail merge uh, I think uh, years and years and years ago so whatever they use for mail merge is probably really really highly effective I don't tend to use the Microsoft um, platform because I like the Google platform but nothing wrong with my actually there is stuff wrong with Microsoft here and there did you guys hear about the outlook for uh, businesses um, I'll call it a kerfuffle that's kind of happening right now anybody know what I'm talking about called pro Microsoft productivity okay so there's a couple of no's on the line at least one all right well you know uh, Microsoft is a business tool yeah okay so Natalia you can look this up you, you've got Microsoft for business um, there's a productivity tool that the administrator of a Microsoft for business account can use and you can get all sorts of information off of it that nobody knew um, uh, was available they get analytics like how many emails everybody sent, who they sent them to, what hours they used sending them, how long it takes them to write an email, to reply to an email. And then it even goes, if you're using like the, out, uh, not Outlook, but whatever Microsoft's, what is it? It's not SharePoint anymore. They changed the name. Whatever their cloud version of Google is, uh, they've been doing analytics on those and businesses have been basically not telling their employees that they're doing this and so that is called spying that's actually they so they are they just lost a labor suit um, National Labor Relations Board um, and so look there's nothing wrong with doing all that if you're a business you measure productivity that's what you do and there are lots of ways to measure it and I can see you know if it takes you uh, three days to reply to email and it's a business you might not be happy about that if you were the business owner however when you do measure productivity the requirements are by the National Labor Relations Board that you let your employees know what the measurement is how the measurement is being taken and you report to them what their productivity numbers are so in the design hub we do that if you if you're gonna get a design hub internship no we measure productivity now it's a little bit loosey-goosey in the design hub because interns don't always know what they're doing and they're learning on the job and often our jobs are not don't have real concrete stuff so but but we have a measurement and uh, we let the the people know the in 
turns no, and and we actually let them self-report sometimes. So um, it's important. So Microsoft just got nailed on that. Not Microsoft, actually. Microsoft is just the tool. But the fact that Microsoft does not have a notification to the people that are using it that productivity tool is on or not is what Microsoft's portion of the sort of suit was. They were, you know, and you can imagine from Microsoft, you go, dudes, we're just giving you a tool. You know, how are they supposed to police how businesses use this kind of useful tool? Um, but in the in the world of electronics now, it's so easy to put up a little button that says you are being monitored that, that, that Microsoft got their hand slapped on that. So um, anyway, I got onto that by, by talking about Document Studio. So look, Google does the same thing. Um, and Google Analytics doesn't have to tell everybody they're 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 using it. So I'm not I'm not really sure why Microsoft got slapped on this one and everybody else didn't. But um, I use I use Google and the tool that I happen to use is called Document Studio. Uh, yeah, they're trying. They, it's Laura says, yeah, they're probably trying to make an example out of them. Um, and and it could be. And now, obviously, um, once that ruling is made, it opens the door for others to look for the same ruling against um, against Google or whoever is the um, productivity oversight software for each company. So that's true. It does allow it does allow the others um, uh, now. It sets a precedence, I think, is how the lawyers talk about it. I'm not a lawyer. Um, and so... I don't I don't know those words all that well. Okay, so that's a good point, making an example of them. So I've used four three or four um mail merge programs and this is the one I just happen to like. It's got some nice features. So I'm going to I'm going to use it for you and give you a demonstration of how you might use it. So I'm going to go to my my drive where I've got some stuff set up. I've got a mail merge sample folder to show you uh, where a mail merge demo. Here it is. I don't know if you guys saw my drive, you would laugh. I keep telling you to be organized. Mine has so much stuff in it. Okay, so mail merge. So here's what here's what mail merge does. It allows you to take a form and create it as an example. So I can create this form. It's a sample request form where you get a name and email address and ask a couple of uh, leading questions. And you set the form up so that there are no restrictions or you can leave it restricted. And you set it up so that you can thank the people for turning in the form and that they will receive a confirmation shortly. I know that's a little hard to read, but that's what it says. Thank you. You'll receive a confirmation shortly. There's nothing worse than submitting something online and not knowing if it got there. So it's nice if you get something back in a little while. So that's what that's what this is. And then forms have an actual live form that's viewable. And this is what somebody would actually fill out, okay? And then they would submit. And I'm going to do that for you in a moment. So that's a form and you want to get some information, okay? And once you get that information, let's say you want to send some information back to whoever put in the form, okay? You want to send a message, thank you, and then you want to confirm to them what they entered. OK, 
Okay, so that's what I've got here. And then you give them a little bit more information. You know, um, send this back. Give us a contact email because this really isn't enough to really get going. But I can get the right person to contact you. And let us know when you're free and we'll contact you. Okay, so that's a, that would be a useful reply of some sort if you were a company. And you'll notice um, normally throughout the semester, I use this a lot. Well, they just finally renewed my ARC license for this yesterday. So in week 15, I got, I got my tool working. You would have been getting much better updates from me about uh, where you're at and how things are going if, uh, if I had had this tool available a little bit sooner. I don't know why my license took so long to get. I've used this for three or four years. Okay, but that would be great information just to send back really quick. And that's the part you want it to be really quick. And so here are some examples of it. Um, so I did a test run where I gave a weird name. I filled some stuff out and... And I got this, and, and I have a PDF copy of what I sent, which means that in Google, I can start looking things up. I can look things up by what folder they're in, by when they were sent, by name. I can, I can look this up, and it, gets, it makes it real easy for me to find later on. Okay, so, so that's what you've got now. Here's what this form, I'm going to go back to this form. If I look at the responses button, I can see everybody's responses. But more importantly, I can click this so that I can get an email when somebody responds. That's kind of nice, but that could really fill up my email. What I really want to do is look at a spreadsheet. So let me go to the spreadsheet that's associated with this. And you can see, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. You can see that every time somebody submits a form, it logs it. It tells me the time, and it tells me what they put in into each one of those. And then Document Studio will create a document and send an email that's really cool i just have to set document studio up so document studio is an add-on and you can go get the add-on and you can see i've used a bunch of them i've used yet another mail merge which is okay i've used one called autocrat which is okay they both work pretty well but i like this one called document studio I like it. So, so here we go. I'm going to open it up and see what, what happens. When Document Studio opens up, it gives you a, a working panel over on the right. And so I can create merged documents, which means go get a template and use this data to fill it in. And you can pick what document to use. And it shows you what your markers are. It says, okay, these are the things that I found in that document that you're able to use. Okay, and you'll see your name matches up with your name. What type of design matches up with what type of design. And what can we do is what we, can we do. So in each each time it does one of these, it's going to read the entry in that column and stick it into the template where I ask for it. So it's a way of customizing. So that's kind of cool. And then I can figure out, tell it how to name my file when it makes a file so that I can find them later on, right? That's how I set this name. Your name, auto response. Um, and then I can actually create an email. 
and I use this little editor that's available, and it sort of steps me through it. Pick an email address. I'm going to pick the one that's listed in the form. You know, who's it from? Um, you know, what's the subject? Is there a reply? Sometimes you put no reply, all that kind of stuff. And then I, I just chose to basically copy my, my template right into here. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to send this information in an email and send a copy of the PDF to the person. That's how I've got it set up. Because I've clicked this, include the document as an attachment. So sometimes I just write, hello, your name, please see the attached document for a lot of good information. And Natalia asks, am I recording today? And I'm going to double check. Yes, my recording is on. And I did make an e uh, a video of this also. So there's my mail merge with Gmail. You do have to have some sort of a Gmail account to do this. Okay. Uh, Google Forms Publisher. Yes, I want it to make a Google Form for me. Um, upload to Google Drive. Yes, I'm going to put it in Mail Merge Responses. That's the folder I found. File sharing. If you want people to be able to see those things, um, I can add anyone with the link can view and all that kind of stuff. And Finish and Merge lets me do a couple of things. I can merge the documents now. And I can make it so it merges on form submit. That is the coolest thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to, it's, oh, I'll save that just to be sure that I've got everything. I'm going to do a form and let's see if it works. So here I go. Here's a form. My name, Schuster. Test it. That's my name. I'll send it to my ARC address. And this time I'll say I'm going to do a, uh, a landscape and I want a quote. So I've got a landscape job and I need a quote. So let me submit that. And it says, thank you. You should receive a confirmation shortly. So let's go. Oh, look, it just showed up. There it is right there. It just showed up, and in, in a moment, I hope this is going to show up. It takes a little bit sometimes. I don't think I have to have it open for that to show up. There it is. It just did its job. It just sent me an email. It just sent that email. Hello, Schuster Test Demo. Thank you for contacting us. We have retrieved your form submittal. Indicates the following. You have a landscape question and you're looking for us to quote a job. Isn't that the coolest thing? That saves so much work. Um, and, and I'll tell you, if you're doing customer relations of any type, this is so important that if you have, um, if you have, yeah, pretty slick. You're not kidding. Um, efficiency. Yeah. Now, here is the problem. What does this replace? This replaces some high school student or an intern or a family member or somebody in your office that would normally get paid to sit there and watch this line and type things up and answer questions. They used to call it an administrative assistant. And uh, so those are being replaced by these automatic things. So you can th say that it's a great thing. You know, the more we automate this stuff, the fewer jobs there are. So I always have this kind of like, ah, I love teaching it and we want to be efficient and tell you the truth. You won't make it as a business person without doing this. But it kind of kills me. Because this was a job. This was part of somebody's job. 
at one point. Um, and so, yeah, and, and Laura says, yeah, and it's a little more impersonable, personal, and things like that. Um, but I would say that if you, if you do this in a proper manner where it's really just a confirmation, you're not there, you're not on the line, you're not watching, but you want to recognize immediately that somebody's done something. Um, or send them a quick report once a month is how things are going, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, and, and, and Laura says, if you're a sole proprietor, and this is just saying that, that yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a personal contact with you. That's what I like to do. And this is what I do in my own business, even though I only have like three clients left because I just, you know, I just don't look for new clients. So I've got three clients that are still in business <laughs> from when I, quote, retired 15 years ago. Uh, but I still have a few people that call me up for work and and I offer my services to them. Uh, this is just really great stuff. And when I do like uh, summer camps and things like that, I use this all the time when people sign up. I kick this back to the parents immediately so that they know. <laughs> they know they've been signed up and and then I give them what the the rest of the process is. So it's kind of a cool thing. Any any other questions about that at this point? Everything? And, and, and I will say this video does go through those steps. Okay? And there are other ones. You should feel free. I am not um, recommending Document Studio over any other product. I think you can read the reviews and the, find the one that does the job for you. Maybe you don't want to save PDFs. That's one thing that Document Studio does that most of the others do not, and that is create the PDF files. Um, and, and I happen to like that because it's I can delete emails or get rid of email. I can find things in one spot. Personal preference. But you can look at all the different ones that are out there. You, you know, if this, if this is a useful tool, and so since it's useful, you'll find many, many, many versions of this. And I've even actually had our Design Hub interns uh, program our own. And so you could do that too if you want. You can get a young student programmer to program your own Google script that does exactly what you want it to do. Okay, cool. So there's some, there's some good, fun information. So now, um, let me just ask, has anybody yet started work on their final portfolio and are willing to share what you've got so far? Is anybody at that spot? Laura, can I unshare mine and let you show what you've got so far? Uh, I think it's super important right now that we all get some ideas from each other. And so next week, be, re be ready to do the same thing too. So Laura, if you could go ahead and, and show us what you've got going so far. Cool. There we go. And I see Laura is using PowerPoint. That's cool. Go ahead, take it away, Laura. Okay, <clears throat> so I just used the same template. It's great, it's helpful, you know. I haven't done anything in the table of contents yet, but I went ahead and just um, divided this up and was looking for your feedback, so this is actually helpful. Um, and do these plot plans, I put these three on for this, for this slide. And then I put the drainage and the swoop and the utilities on to the next slide. Tried that to looked, keep it. Yeah, that looks yeah. really good. Okay. Tried to not put any more than three um, drawings per slide, basically. So I have, I did include all my drawings and kept it to anywhere from um, 
two to three. So like on this yeah. one, I project one, one, and then this was the Wildman Hills. Cool. No, that looks really good. And then, okay. So yeah, this is about where I, and then this is the, um, you know, our land planning. So I put these three slides on and this is where I was, you know, this is where we also have all those supporting documents. Um, but I was thinking, do we, we don't need any more than just the drawings for these, right? Well, that's correct. If you want to put the supporting documents on, like the letters and everything, you've got room on there to make a little table or a little text box with links. Okay. And, and that way somebody would know that you also did some other things. They don't kind of like look that great on a portfolio. Right. They're so tiny, nobody could actually read it. But right. if you wanted to put like a little table of supporting documents, that would be a good thing. Okay. And then, um, and then these were the last two for the, I put these on separately because it made the most sense that, that the new construction and the data would be together. Right. Then um, I didn't get to this one yet where I divided everything up. I, I started sticking everything in here at first, and then I just decided to start dividing it up um, into different slides. And like, uh, oh, this was my industry choice. Okay, so I'll probably divide this up too. I'll right. probably put two in here, these two in here, and then these two on the separate slide. And I'll probably bucket these into these, maybe three of these, um, and then yeah, I might have to do it in fours because we did kind of do those classes in um, over a section of weeks too. So um, I'll probably do these two and then these. Right. Yeah, something okay, like that. Okay, so that uh, looks really good. Uh, one of the things that we talk about uh, normally when we do a face-to-face -face class is that I require pictures of you using the survey instruments and oh by the way i don't know if you guys got the notification but dr king did send out our chancellor did send out a communication saying that if uh sacramento gets out of purple tier by like week four of four or five of the spring semester that they do have plans for departments and courses that are entirely outside and have approved safety COVID plans to be able to hold on-campus activities. So what we were talking about of, of potentially getting, you know, you guys out there, and I talked with our dean and he's all behind it, of, of setting up some of the equipment so that you can touch it <laughs> and actually use it there's a there's a good chance of that happening sometime if we can get out of purple tier um in the sacramento area there's a good chance of that happening in the last uh five to eight weeks of the spring semester uh, but what i was getting at here is if you could go into the survey game and just take some screenshots of what it looked like screenshots of uh you know a rod of looking through the scope of what you see and and maybe put in one page of screenshots from the game that would help people understand how you got this data does that make sense yes so this looks really, really good. I mean, it's not required, certainly. Uh, this looks really, really nice. I, I like the way you've put it together. It's clean. It's easy to see. And I think uh, anybody would, um, looking at this, would go, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what that class was about. And, and that there's some oomph behind it and that you did a lot of work. So that looks really good. Cool. There you go. Uh, Benjamin, do you have do you have any that you'd like to show too, or was that just a comment that 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 you've got some cool stuff also?
Oh, okay. So you've got some of the screenshots of the virtual world. That that's cool. Do you want to? Do you have them where you can share them? Um, so that people can see what we're talking about. Can you do a, a screen share or not? I'm not sure if you've got that available on your computer you're on. Okay. Um, so, so that's cool. Maybe what you can do is, is put some of them, um, put some of them into the discussion board. So you guys are, are, are all welcome to put some of your work on the discussion board too, so that people can see what you're doing. Does anybody else have have either portfolio they want to share or um, your industry choice work that you'd like to share with us so that we can see the cool work? Ayub or, you know, your, your Minecraft stuff was pretty cool. Um, do you have any of that available that you can share? What's on? I think yours looked really nice. Actually, everybody's I've seen looked really nice. Uh, yes. So Laura says, can we still access the virtual world? Yes, you can access the virtual world. As a matter of fact, it's been updated so you can even move the camera yourself. And it's got the two buildings in it now also. And if you want to practice and make that your final exam version, you'll be able to do so. Um, and for those of you who are maybe interested in an internship, one of the things that, that we'll be looking for is that we create five or ten different virtual worlds to do the survey in, one of them being... Um, Okay, so Wasan says she hasn't done the portfolio the portfolio yet. Uh, do you Wasan? Do you want to just show your industry choice work because it looked really nice? If you'd like to, if you'd like to show that. Um, but uh, we have some really cool um, items to put in for survey. We've got for those of you who may have done it. Um, cool. Yeah, if you want to do the first one with Son, that would be cool. We have an overpass from Highway 110 and First Avenue in Simi Valley. We have um, we have Wildman Hill to do. We have the bunkers to do. We have a whole bunch of these um, that that we need to be put into here so that we can do survey. Um. And so there's, there's work to be done in that arena of creating survey environments in Revit and in SketchUp. Cool. Okay, so this is your, so this is Wasan's industry. Do you want to tell us what, what we're looking at here, Wasan? It looks really nice. Go ahead and turn your microphone on if you've got it with Son. Okay, so with Son's mic isn't working. Uh, but that's okay. You can see you can see here. So you can see from this that she's doing community use of property. She's got the existing and that is really, really cool. So you've got, ch oh, that is nice. And that's Revit, correct? That, that's, that's a Revit uh, rendering. Right? And so you've got car charging. And you had car charging and one other thing. Didn't you have a, a community pool? Yeah, I see the community pool area over there. So this is just a really nice little bit of 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 work for land planning and uh, I can even see you've got there's a place structure the the pool there's benches there's kind of a garden area and I know that you had car charging area so this is really really a cool one yeah there's the car charging area um and so that's what that's what we're talking about is is how do you take this thing that that is right now is just two rental properties 
and and you make it something that really provides some strength to the community and this can all be done it'll be interesting um if at some point somebody wanted to take that this would be great for design 310 by the way to take some of these and do the economic analysis portion of it right what does it cost to put in a pool what does it cost to put in a car charger what would you you know, what would be the surcharge to the community or to the community association to be able to keep it up? Those would all be great things once you've got that that framework. Like Natalia has um, an excellent. You want to show Natalia? Do you want to? Um, do you have yours laid out yet? Like I know you've got your parking and stuff. Do you have the area where you're showing your greenhouses and stuff yet? Um, I do have an uh, orchard uh, completed and uh, with a touch parking lot. But the greenhouses, I probably will not show because uh, it's a lot of calculations and I'll just uh, do like a future construction <laughs> zone. That's it. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe you can show that. And Wasan says she's working on landscape. Can you give, give some advice and stuff? So... Um, I'll tell you, Wasan, the best person people for advice are the people in, in the landscape department. So uh, if you are, a, you know, Benjamin or Laura or Natalia or any of the others that are in landscape, um, if, if you are willing to uh, talk to Wasan and listen to some questions and get some good advice, um, that's that's when people ask me about landscape my advice is ask a landscape person <laughs> so cool uh so natalia yeah why don't you pull yours up please and show the portion where you did the parking on that little triangle and you've got that orchard area kind of identified and laid out if you want to pull that up and show people and tell us what you've got going there it's really cool the different stuff that everybody has done. Okay, give me a second. Yeah. And then Benjamin has some really nice stuff. Benjamin, maybe next week we can get you to, if if you're able to, or or maybe post some of your stuff onto the discussion board so that we can take a look at it. Because he's got some really, really cool stuff in in there now oh cool okay yeah yeah that's what you would do um he's doing the SACOG that is really cool yeah and you just do you do you just attach your SACOG to the beginning of your number one that is correct so tell us what you've got here Natalia your mic is off Sorry, there we <laughs> I go. was done. Uh, okay. So uh, let me let me start from the beginning. Uh, what and how? No. So this is this is the area, and the, uh, uh, then it's this is the whole uh, the whole property. This is existing one. And uh, this is the part that I decided to make parking lot. Uh, so it would be easier for me to maintain my orchard and uh, my greenhouses without interfering people being on the main property. So that's where this thing uh, come to. So this is the uh, development and uh, removing uh, old, actually they're really huge and um, not really pretty. Uh, so uh, as you suggested, I'm uh, removing all of them and I'm replacing that with the ornamental uh, pair. Uh, and it's very popular uh, here in Sacramento area. And uh, uh, also it's... Uh, uh, good for uh, zone five. 
so for the screen and privacy, uh, I, I'm going to place them. Oh. And I uh, see it's uh, like uh, three seasons. It's uh, blooming really nicely. Then it's a uh, green and uh, really bright color. So uh, I, I think that's really going to be good. You know, because that one, that one house, when you, when you, you know, work with your neighbors and everything, and then they see that you're doing an expense really specifically for them, because obviously the people that come and park don't, don't really care, right? <laughs> other than, yeah. other than, oh, well, that's nice looking. Um, that really gets a lot of goodwill to the, the farms that are right next to you i think that's an excellent choice so and let me show you well like uh it is still in um in dynascape come on open up where are you i don't know do you guys see my dynascape uh not yet. I don't know. You have to, to you have to stop sharing this and then go s share your Dynascape window. Um, it's just oh, okay, okay, yeah, because I have two screens. Yeah. That's right. Um. Okay. Do you see my? Yep. Okay. So this is in attachment. Uh, my uh, my parking. So right here, I placed the little shrub hedge, maybe like three feet high, so it would separate <clears throat> because it's pretty flat area. Uh, so it's uh, it would protect. Or maybe they create the separation view. And uh, right here is my little uh, fruit shed that uh, I would have uh, easy access from the orchard uh, right here. And uh, on the, in the orchard, um, um, question, uh, all of those calculations and the requirements for um, uh for buildings uh, how got those numbers uh, and the uh, minimum requirements for parking do you uh, do you want um the link or yeah just put the... just put the link in okay so right here right here is uh um uh, is my event building this is my uh, uh bathroom trailer with the sink and the toilets. Right here is the photo shoot event area. And right here is like a event uh, vehicle parking spot, like a for limo. And um, so, yeah. Well, this is that, that's really cool. There's a, there's a winery that's not, it's probably about five minutes from my house. I live on the outskirts of Davis. And, and these guys in 2010 bought a, a farmhouse. I used to play there with the, with the former owners when I was a kid. Uh, and they've turned it into a winery. And they have the coolest events there. Um, we've been going there a bunch because it, they have outdoor events, wine tasting, and, and we like to, to help local places. Uh, and even in the in the times right now, they have their tables ten feet apart and all this kind of stuff. They get probably forty or fifty people on Friday and Saturday afternoons and evenings. It's a really good way to run a cool little business. It's um, you know, they're making probably, you know. 1500 bucks a day off of that and 
I'm sure they give a bunch of it to their interns and stuff. But that concept of having a little event center in a really nice area uh, is really cool. I think I think you've got a really good idea right there for that. So cool. Okay. Well, you guys can see that's um. Uh, you can see that a, a wide range of things that are going on and being done. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody's um, and and what you've got what you've got going. Let me do one other thing, and this is going to be um, for the and I'm going to just I'm going to try it right now um, because. Again, my Minecraft stopped working about three weeks ago because my license, I don't know why our district had so many problems with licenses, but I'm going to see if I can get and show you how the Minecraft thing is going to work for those that want to do surveying from Minecraft. Okay. Let's see if I can get into it. Okay, so you guys, I think, can see what's going on on my screen. And I'll just go to, I think this was, I think this was the one that I did. Think, 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 think. I don't know why it's taking so long to generate this. But what I want to do is show you that I, if I can figure out, there we are, and I'm not where I normally started, but you can see I'm, I can do stuff. I, what I'm going to do is give you um, an area to go to and I will have it surveyed with some markers and you'll need to come in and get the get the survey done. So let me see if I can show in settings. Okay, where is my share? Now I've, see I'm blown it. How to play, ba, ba, ba. hosting. So what I'll be able to do is I'll give you this address right here which is the join code, or I'll give you this join code. I'll take a picture of it. And then while I'm in it, you'll be able to get into it, into the world that I've built, and you'll be able to do your survey. Okay? So that's how, that's how if you're interested in doing the, from Minecraft to a survey record, that's how you'll do it. I'll give you this code or this IP address. You'll go to my world and I'll give you the coordinates to TP to. And then you'll basically go to each column that I've put in there, which is like a rod. And you'll get the XYZ coordinates and you'll record it on a survey. Uh, sheet and then you'll make a quick drawing of it simple right I mean it's like super super simple it should take you an hour or less because there will only be like six points in here to actually survey and six points to draw all right so I wanted to show you that so that you could see how it would work um, you'll have to sort of let me know when you want to do it because uh, 
the educational license works a little bit different than a normal uh, server and that I actually have, I have to be logged in to my world in order for you to be able to um, join it. So Ayub and Renolfo or anybody else who, who did this in the Minecraft and wants to try that for your final exam, um, just for fun, I think um, uh, you can just email me as to what time, what day and what time you want to do it, and and you can just you can just do it. Okay, I'll just make sure that I have it on. All right, so that's how that's how we do it. I would I would copy this join code for you. Um, well, really, I I actually don't until you turn it in. You don't have to tell me, but that's why I'm bringing this one up. If you choose to do this one, you just have to email me, you know, the day before you want to do it. And I'll make sure that I log in in the morning, send you the hosting code, and then I'll leave it on all day so that you can do it sort of whenever you want. We don't have to coordinate that much. It's not... It's not that tricky to coordinate, but I think it's kind of a cool thing, right? So, um, so there we go. And I am, I am looking for an intern. I know that Adrian has expressed some interest. Cordova High is is really interested in having um, a number of their students work with us um, in this. And like I said, like I've got the other survey items, I've got tons of environments that um, are sort of needed for us to be able to do projects in, in Minecraft. And so uh, if you're interested, I'm looking for an intern or two to be able to be the host, to get hosting going on computers, to have the worlds available to share them and to set them up and uh, to make them to make them ready to go one of our long-term goals is to actually model the campus in minecraft so that when people want to do a tour of the camp i don't know have any of you taken the quote virtual tour of our campus i I hate to rag on the poor person who did all the work to put it together. It is absolutely horrible. I mean, I would not come to this campus if that was what we are putting forward. Um, but how fun if we were to do it from a drone scan or in Minecraft or as an actual virtual tour. Um, I could see us really, really being able to do some cool, some cool, which reminds me now that I need, um, portable virtual tours. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? I'm going to go ahead and go back to my game. You know, fly around a little bit just for fun. Um, I thought I had something built on one of these. This does look like the site, though, doesn't it, Ayub? This does look like the site where you did your building. So I think I'm in the right spot. I recognize those two little lakes there, and I recognize... Um, I think I recognize this as a portion of where where the thing was. So um, this does look like I'm in the right site where you had to do your work. Okay. Um, any questions before? Yeah, Natalia says, uh, uh, yeah, so I think yes. Um, uh, so that's really cool. Um, a virtual tour would help a lot, says Natalia. 
Um, how to save class videos are the ones that you made to your own drive. Well, that's really interesting. I made them all as YouTubes. Uh, so, um, so Laura, like you're talking about any of the tutorials or the class lectures. Yeah, I thought that you had written up that you were going to um, show us how to save some of the videos that were made over the semester. Okay, let me... Let I misinterpreted that. Uh, that could be. Did I show you how to do a PowerPoint no. screen record? Uh, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Okay, I did that in at least one class, so I don't ever remember. Um, see, I have to come back here. Save and exit. Save and exit. Let me do that. Let me do that right now. Um. So there's a few things that you can do. Let me exit out of Minecraft. Exit, exit. There we go. So there's a few things. One, if you go to my channel, you'll see that they're all in there. And YouTube doesn't let you down. Uh, I can download. Are you allowed to download these? Do you get the download option? Um, I'm not sure if you get the download option or not. Um, but you can certainly get the shareable link. So like, even if you go to one and you play it, let's see, play, there we go. And you see it here. I don't know what it's saying. I've just started the recording. This is being recorded. Uh, this is the so lecture you can for Design 350. You can definitely it's Tuesday, December 1st. Take your copy And uh, you can join and on you Discord. Can even we don't have anybody on Discord right another, now. Or through Google Meet where most, site. most of you are right now. So the recording is... So that's, that's one thing that you could do. Here's another thing that you can do. And I'm going to show you this to you using... Yeah. Um... And, and actually, let me show you another thing. We are working on getting this put together, which is another place where we need an intern. If you go to our lecture videos page, um, these are going to get filled up with links to all the videos. So that's, you'll be able to find them here also if you want to have them. But again, you won't be able to have just the part that you want uh, for how long. So this one will be up. This is a Google site. So this one stays up pretty much year after year after year. That's also why I like the Google Calendar. You should keep a link to that Google Calendar because that Google Calendar will stay up year after year after year. But I want to show you how to do another thing, and I'm going to do it through VMware because I'm going to use PowerPoint to show you. So let me make that small. I'm logging into VMware right now. Oops, did the wrong thing there. I'm logging into VMware. Okay, and I'm going to go find that site. And I'm just going to show you on a generic one. Now I have to go be able to find it somehow. ARC. Programs and Majors. To 
Design and Engineering Technology. Yes, I know you do cookies. Go to the actual page that's really useful. And I'll go to Tech Ed Tutorials right now, just because they're easier to find. And let's say I want a tutorial about um, about how to use um, how to save my work. So I want I want I want to be able to uh, do that. Okay, and I know you can't hear my sound right now because I don't have. Oops, because it doesn't quite work on the. Uh, it does work on VMware, but just not quite that way. And this is interesting. It's full screen, so I need to get it to a smaller screen. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to open PowerPoint. This is one of the easiest ways to get it, PowerPoint. And then I'm going to show you, after I show you PowerPoint, I'm going to show you the, the product that I use. Okay, so here's PowerPoint, and I'm going to insert Come on, PowerPoint, start working. A screen recording. And I can have audio and recording, and I'm going to collect full screen. And I'm going to start my recording. And now I can. I'm, I'm recording this right now. It's kind of cool. I'm getting my whole recording. And it's shift window bar Q. Stops the recording. And that shows up now. This is actually a recording in PowerPoint. And now I can. Okay. And from there, if I right click on it, I can save the media. Let me do that again. Right click. I can save the media and it saves it as an MP4. What's cool about that is you can do just the portions that you're interested in. Okay, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you've got a lot of these already. Um, uh, but what's really cool is you can record just the part that you want to record. So that's neat. And now, of course, I can um, stop this. I can close those all up. And, and there's the recording right there. That's it. And so now I can put that in my file system. So that's a, that's a neat thing to be able to do. Um, if you have PowerPoint, that's really great. If you're working on a Mac... They have some nice recording um, applications native on the Mac. So that's all cool. Um, another way to go is to use something, and I'm going to get out of this right now. I use something called OBS. So let me pull up OBS, and I'm not sure what this is going to look like, if it's going to give me my millions on millions and millions of these. But this is the software that I use, and I, and I really like it because I can have multiple audio inputs. I can have multiple displays. I can pick different displays to look at as I'm recording. Uh, I can set it up so that I have different things preset. And you can see right here, 
I'm able to see that 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 my recording is working. And if I want desktop audio, I've got that one on so that I can catch when you guys talk. That does make a, a little bit of a problem in some cases, but I keep kind of away from my desktop audio and kind of close in to my other audio input when I'm talking so I don't echo them back and forth to each other. Um, so this is called OBS. What I like about it is you can install this on a USB if you want and take it from computer to computer to computer. Um, so Natalia says, you were able to get your Google Drive years later after you left school. Uh, they have changed the system right now. If you are not enrolled in classes for three consecutive semesters, your Google Drive will be erased now. So that's a bummer. Um, so Natalia says that she was able to get to her Google Drive later on. Um, so um, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's two ways you can handle that. You can register for some cool class lifelong learning and do something every couple of semesters and your stuff will be clear uh, the other thing that I do is I actually share my entire ARC Google Drive with my personal Google Drive and so then if I need to uh, change ownership if for some reason I, I'm no longer with ARC, uh, I've retired or something like that, or I've, uh, you know, they've gotten sick of me complaining about purchasing or something like that, um, and, and I no longer have access, uh, I can get it through my own personal drive. Particularly of importance, and we've had this happen, a faculty member gets in an accident or has an unexplained illness, unexpected illness and nobody can get into their files. Well, for me, since I've shared it and my wife has access, um, it's possible for, um, you know, if somebody needs something, they can request through me and I can tell my wife, oh, go get it through here, here, or here, uh, or she could get it. And that, that access is not lost. Well, yeah, just move files to your own drive. I'm going to show you something interesting right now. I'll show you what, what my Google Drive looks like. Because I've been using Google Drive for years. This is my Google Drive. I've got 135 gigabytes used right now in my Google Drive. That's my, that's my Google Drive, okay? And then for Design Hub, this actually works better, are shared drives. Because so long as there is one person active who shares this drive, this stuff stays active. So uh, my shared drives, that's, that's how I've got those. Um, it's a it's a good way. So Benjamin says, when I leave in the fall, I need to transfer my stuff or it will be tossed. Just clarifying. Uh, the answer is um, after three semesters. And I don't believe summer counts. So that would be fall, spring, fall. If you do not register for a class fall, spring, fall, then yeah one and a half years now i'm not sure if you can game the system by um registering for a class and then dropping it after a week i don't know what that will be like so cool so benjamin you will be in davis you're you're at, at uc davis or just hanging about living and working 
Well, congratulations. That is really, really cool. And are you doing the landscape architecture uh, thing at UC Davis? Is that what... Um, is that the is that the the program you are in, or are you in horticulture, or what what will you be doing if we can ask? That's really really cool. Um, but yeah, so so you will want to, and and you guys might not have 135 gigabytes, you might have less, and you can just transfer ownership. So to transfer ownership. I go to my drive and I'll just call up some 3D print file. Um, here's a 3D print file. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, Natalia, that's, uh, we, we had a good discussion about that. Uh, so if I come over here and I look at the sharing, it says who the owner is. And I should be able to change that. Well, maybe I haven't shared this particular one. Well, that's really interesting. Why is that coming up like that? Don't tell me they've changed this now. I just added myself to that, I know. Let's see if that worked better. There we go. I just didn't do it right. Person added, so now if I go to the share, there we go. I should be able to make another person myself the owner now I'm not positive if you can do that with a folder um, let's look at these are all pretty old so I can probably see if I can do that with this folder if you can make the whole folder that way And oh man, so that's a change. Did you see that? I can't make myself the owner. Oh, that's a total booger. That's going to be uh that's going to be interesting. So that's that's cool. Yeah, so so Natalia um we had a we had a conversation um about um Cal Poly where my niece went. Um and so but Benjamin, have you been accepted already? That is, that is, so congratulations. Um, that, that is really, really cool. I'd love to talk to you about it and see what the experience ends up being like as you, as you go through it. My, my niece went to Cal Poly and architect and landscape architecture, and landscape architecture. Uh, and it was a great, great, great experience for her. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. They seem to have changed how that thing works. Um, do you guys have any other, uh, yeah, oh, that is really cool. Yeah, the fire thing is a huge deal, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, and so are you familiar, uh, Benjamin, with what they're terming fire-safe landscaping? Or, um, that's, that's sort of kind of of interest to me, uh, because, We've got um, 
like I was telling you, when, when the fires were hitting, I've got some cousins that own this phenomenal, phenomenal place out in the woods, the redwoods on the Russian River, near the Russian River. And they were able to save their 100-year-old farmhouse, um, but it was some last-minute work by a fire fighter who happened to live on that little valley. Yeah, um, that is really, really cool. Um, love, to, love to hear what happens. And, and obviously, sustainability and urban forestry is such a huge deal for us. Um, it, it really is important. So congratulations on that. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing, uh, seeing some of the work that you uh, end, up, end up working on cool um okay any other and that, that is just really great any other good questions or comments before we log this off okay i'm gonna stop